So the first thing you do, um, and this is, I'm talking about this because this is the year where we are talk we've been talking about the split, right? One of the things we want to manifest is a very, very beautiful experience, <laughs> even of the split, right? So this is when we start maybe um, bringing other people into the, what we want and not necessarily something that they want. One of the examples I like, examples I like to use is, okay, so you say you want to manifest a million dollars or a billion dollars. Okay, so the first thing is, if I said a million dollars, how do you feel about that? Do you feel, whoa, that's so much money, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Or do you feel, I can't do anything with a million dollars. It's like, you know, the, the house I wanted to get is actually five million dollars. So one million dollars is not going to do anything for me. So it's like, that's the first thing, right? The same with a billion dollars. Do you feel, oh my gosh, a billion dollars, that's never going to happen, man. And that's it. That's the end of that manifestation. Um, and if you think about it like a billion, hmm, well, that's a good start because the project that I want to get involved with costs five billion. So, um, but I can start with a million, a billion and um, work from there. I can get other people to finance this and stuff like that, financiers and whatnot. But yeah, a billion dollars is a good start. So that's the first thing, right? Same goes with your health. Same goes with your relationships, with your work. If there's a, you find your comfort zone. Um, they say push past your comfort zone. But we'll start finding out what the comfort zone is first, okay? <laughs> so first of all, we figure out what's our comfort zone. And then we start figuring out the rest. Oh my gosh, is it a kitty cat here? Hi. 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 What happened to you? Hi, what happened? We brought bread and he got sick in the car. So Larry just went to fetch him. Poor thing. Um, anyways, so we were talking about manifestation. Um, and it's very relevant to this split. <laughs> and this year, I'm having a better time of this year coming up uh, for the first next few months, right? Having an easier time of it. So we find what's comfortable, what we think is believable. And then we start thinking, well, why? What is my why for this, right? And again, I, I really like to use the ex example of the money because a lot of people know that money you can do stuff with right some ability to do so and our society is money based um basically <laughs> you you can't do much if you don't have it at the moment um so the transitional period we're gonna need that so um so let's talk about that so a lot of people talk about okay so i want uh, so let's say 10 million dollars that's my comfort zone i want 10 million dollars i can do a lot with it and then I can give my mom a new house, my brother. I could give him about, I don't know, maybe one million because um, you know his business is failing. And then I can give my sister probably 200,000 because that's what she owns on her mortgage. And, and then I've got my children, you know, and I can give my kids maybe 500,000 each. Um, yeah, let's do that, right? Oh, yeah, and my neighbors, and then, oh, I have to give some charity, you know, because that's the right thing to do. So now you don't have a creation, right? A singular creation. You have a group creation. You have a co-creation. And you have, like, all these people that are in your life that you're going to give money to when you get your 10 million. All these individuals are running different programs, right? So some of them might be running the program of money is dirty and bad for you. Another one might be running a program if you're rich, you're bad and evil and greedy. Um, another one will be running a program, money can't buy you happiness. So you're gonna be miserable basically if you get rich. Another person might be running just poverty programs, you know, like I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor. And another one might be writing programs of, okay, so if I take this money, then what does he want from me, right? Do 
like debt programs. Um, and um, another person might be um, running programs of how to get all 10 millions, not just one <laughs> from you, right? So now you have all these programs that are out of your control because you're not them, but you included them in your intention. So um, it can backfire very, very quickly, can stop your your uh, manifestation very fast um, and then after you figure that out so you go okay I, so I'm not gonna give anybody any money then you go oh my god then everybody will think I'm mean and horrible and all these type of things right but you can give them you know things to do like for example okay mom um, if you want me to pay your mortgage or mom and dad you have to do the Ascension 101 course and the Love, Sex and Relationships course, and that's just an example. You could even tell them you're going to have to clean house, you have to clean up all your mess and um, and process your fear, right? Whatever. Or you can tell them, okay, before I give you this, you're going to have to go back to university and learn how to um, do investments. I don't know. You know, um, maybe they had a passion that they dropped and you could give them a, that as their homework, you know. Okay, dad, you're going to go back to school and you're going to become a carpenter, right? Once you become a really good carpenter and it's probably going to take you about four or five years, then I'm going to give you a million dollars to pay for your mortgage, right? Off your mortgage and do whatever you want with it. So in that case, they have to work for it and they have to be on, on board right because they're doing something actively doing something to get part of that wealth that you manifested and um you know we're not talking here about babies or people that are very very sick so someone with alzheimer's you know it's like yeah you're gonna pay for the best care in the world of course you are but they're not gonna know about it <laughs> right so they're not part of that equation um, as such, I mean, at a higher self level, yes, they are. But often we, and we know we can pretty much um, trust the person's higher self to do what's best for them and for us too. So, this is what one example, the one about um, the money thing. The health one, that's also a good creation because. Guess what? If you're healthy, you're supporting others, you're supporting yourself, you're doing all these things. If you get sick, suddenly you need other people to take care of you. And sometimes you can't take care of other people. And, um, you know, that is a big, a massive thing, right? That's a really, really big thing. <clears throat> so I like to use the example of... Um, my arms, um, when I was 18, I had a motorbike accident and I messed up my arms and my back. My back is pretty good now, so but I have to look after it really well. If I, t if I pick up something really heavy, for example, forget it. <laughs> I need to go back to the chiropractor or something. <clears throat> but my arms are pretty functional. I have 40 something percent mobility on this hand, 80 something percent on this one. Um, and most of the time they're pain free. When Larry and I first got together, I managed to re-injure my, uh, my right arm and then my left arm and I couldn't use my arms. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I'm such a burden, you know, I was running all these programs of being independent and being the one that takes care of everybody. And uh, suddenly I had to, Larry even do up my buttons you know it's like I couldn't do my buttons and he had to cook for me and help me with my shoelaces and put in my clothes I was like oh my god this is awful you know it's like the poor guy it's like this is terrible I don't want to put anybody through that and here we are you know and then um, it turns out that for Larry to be able to look after somebody that he loves is, is the maximum expression of love, right? And if I hadn't 
got sick like that with my arms, I would never have learned that, right? And I would have always been totally independent and not allowing him to express his love. So eventually we come to, a, a, once I realized it, I just realized what was going on. Um, I was able to accept uh, loving care and TLC and the loving care, right? Um, and then my arms got better. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have to have that anymore. So often uh, with our health, um, and you know, some, it's, sometimes it's just about you and your body, not other people outside of your uh, reality, or, or in your reality, but not part of this equation. It's just you and your body having to work together, or your body tells you something. Often I've heard of people saying, yeah, I need to take a holiday, I need to take a holiday, I need to take a break from work but I can't because I've got this project and that project and the other project and I won't do it. Boom, they get the flu, right? And they're out for a week or two, not unable to do anything except sleep and take aspirins or whatever, right? And then it's like, yeah, it's so common. And then you tap into, they tap into their physical body and they say, hey, you know, I was telling you for months that I needed a rest, I needed a break, but you wouldn't listen. So I, you know, the rest we took a break <laughs> and you go oh my gosh you know okay next time i'm gonna lesson do you i don't think so <laughs> maybe <laughs> um when she starts or he starts getting like a stuffed nose then maybe you listen <gasps> oh my god i promised that i would listen next time and i haven't okay i'm gonna take a break you take a day off or something you know so the co-manifestation, co-creations, um, one of the important aspects of this year is that really, truly, you cannot engage in low frequency co-creations if you want to have an easy time of it. Of course you can, you're free to do anything you want. But if you want to have an easier time of this uh, transition or even this year, you, you can't indulge um, and you go, but, but my kid, my this and the other, you know, um, yeah, don't do it and educate yourself, right? Um, sometimes you engage without even knowing it. Um, I have a son who's an addict and he has played me, he played me for years. Every single excuse you can think of, he would do. <laughs> and I would fall for it. And then I started educating myself and I learned about enabling and um, I learned about what type of things they say, you know. Even, hey mom, I'm, I have an interview on Monday and I need a new pair of shoes because my shoes are really, really old. So can you buy me a pair of shoes? And you buy them a pair of shoes, guess what? They're gonna sell it. <laughs> and get drugs yeah to that extent um so anyways it's like that type of um dynamics we can be very very aware of we can even put programs in that say hey you know if one of this is happening i want to be sure and know that this is what's happening so that i can take steps to not fall for it not become part of a co-creation of Addiction, you know, for example, on somebody that I love. 